What are some of the dumbest crimes people actually do? Let's find out what they did. Starting with... Number six, the thirsty thief. Harry Rose and Connor Gooderson decided to risk jail time by stealing alcohol from a hotel bar. Interestingly, this story doesn't start with Rose and Gooderson stealing alcohol. It starts with them going into a Marks and Spencer, which is a very popular chain British store, near the Gatwick Hotel in London late at night. Once in the store, they stole steak, meat, protein bars, and fizzy drinks. Their next adventure was to be found at a nearby airport hotel. They forced open the hotel's doors, and Rose entered to see what he could steal while Gooderson acted as a lookout. Once in the hotel, Rose found himself in the bar area and started stealing the hotel's liquor. He also decided to pour himself a glass of beer while robbing the bar, which is something all clever thieves do. While Rose was robbing the store, a hotel staff member interrupted him. But instead of explaining to the staff member that he was just a gentleman robber, Rose dropped his bag of stolen alcohol and ran out of the hotel. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get very far and was arrested by the police just a few minutes later. Rose and his lookout Gooderson were charged in court and they admitted theft and burglary. Rose said that he was only robbing the stores because he wanted to pay off the debt that his father owed a strange man. That's a pretty strange excuse given that Rose mainly just stole alcohol. Maybe he wanted to pay the man off with bottles of alcoholic beverages. Number five, Samantha Lotus can't fix your eyes. Canadian influencer Samantha Lotus said that she could fix eyesight without glasses for just $11. Lotus had around 20,000 followers on Instagram and was known for posting content about spirituality. In a now deleted video, she claimed that people who use glasses were misled and didn't need the glasses to see. Lotus said that the reasons they had eye problems were because of mental, emotional, and spiritual reasons that had nothing to do with their actual eyes. She further claimed that she could solve those problems for them and stop them from using glasses. Samantha Lotus is the hero we need, taking down big optometry. However, there was a catch. Followers had to purchase an $11 ticket to attend her masterclass. She also warned her followers that the class wasn't for close-minded people who wanted to stay victims. Because, and you didn't know this, but Samantha does, people who are victims of bad eyesight have made this a choice. That probably should have been the fourth or fifth red flag. Amazingly, some people actually showed up to Lotus's masterclass. According to Mallory, a TikTok user who tries to combat disinformation on the internet, Lotus made roughly $5,000 through the event which at $11 a head, that's a decent turnout. However, the class was unhelpful as Lotus just told the people in the class to work harder on their spiritual, mental, and emotional states to stop using glasses. Kind of like when Paris Hilton told people to just stop being poor. Apparently, Lotus feels that people should just try harder to see without glasses. Lotus has come out to deny Mallory's claims and argued that she never said people didn't need glasses. She also said that her class was just to help people improve their eyesight through healing. Glasses probably help more than healing though, right? Mallory continued to post about Lotus's scam masterclass session, but Lotus wasn't having it. She threatened to get the police involved, but Mallory didn't care and kept right on exposing her. Lotus didn't just go after Mallory either. She went after anyone with an audience who criticized her. This included Dr. Siab Panwar, a board-certified interventional cardiologist who called Lotus a gaslighting quack. The American Academy of Ophthalmology also said that Lotus's claims were entirely fictional. Unfortunately for Lotus's victims, they've paid for her masterclass and she's held it. No outrage can force her to refund the money paid, so she probably got away with it, despite her scam being transparently ridiculous. Oh, and here's a shocker. Lotus's whole masterclass was apparently to promote doTERRA, a company that sponsors her and sells health and wellness items. The company made it clear that its products aren't intended to cure or prevent any disease, but it appears her masterclass was more about making money. We need to invent something that cures or prevents people like Samantha Lotus. Number four, the misbehaving therapist. 
Anna Cecilia Torado Cabrera faced charges for billing Florida's Medicaid system for charging for services she never rendered. Torado's fraud came to light after an anonymous tipster told the authorities to look into her work conduct. Preliminary investigations found that she was meant to be providing behavioral health care to a patient six times a week, but usually only came maybe three or four times a week. Each visit to the patient lasted around 40 minutes, and things got even more infrequent after Torado gave birth. According to the mother of the young patient, Torado only came over to provide treatment maybe two or three times after she gave birth. Sometimes she came over, parked her car outside the premises, and then called to ask if she could be excused because her pregnancy was taking a toll on her health. Throughout all of this, Torado was billing the Medicaid system for a phantom six times a week visits. She even once billed for 11 straight days of therapy, which began just three days after she gave birth. This obviously never happened, and it's odd because no one would seriously believe that she went to work for 11 straight days just three days after giving birth. In any case, the authorities eventually uncovered the full extent of the fraud and found that Torado had billed nearly $30,000 for services she never rendered. She was arrested and has now been charged with filing a false Medicaid claim. And look, we're not saying it's impossible for her to be working three days after giving birth, but it definitely seems like creating babies is uh, tough work. Number three, she really wanted it. Accountant Sophie Workman cheated her clients out of around 150,000 pounds in a calculated and persistent fraudulent scheme that was so obvious it was almost guaranteed to be traced back to her. Sophie Workman worked with all sorts of different clients and had a lot of knowledge about their internal operations. She used this knowledge to set up more than 40 different bank accounts and then used a series of fake or duplicated invoices to request payments from her victims' creditors. Through this, she was able to steal a about 150,000 pounds. Her victims only began to realize that something was wrong when their clients complained about invoices that hadn't been paid despite money leaving their accounts. The police got involved and before long, they figured out that Workman was the one behind the whole scheme. Police raided her home and found a note where she had a list of everything she wanted. It was an I want list where she wrote that she wanted to make a lot of money quickly to be clear of her debts and buy her own house. Unfortunately, for Workman, it doesn't seem those dreams will be coming through anytime soon. But this isn't all Workman's fault. In court, Workman's lawyer claimed that she'd been pushed to a world of crime by an unnamed ex who made her continue these crimes when she wanted to stop. In the end, Workman was sentenced to two years and four months in prison. We're not sure how she thought she was going to get away with the whole thing either, since everything was going to lead back to her anyway. Maybe the last thing on her I want list was getting caught? Number two, here to deposit my change. Slavo Kavic stole over $170,000 from parking meters and used the money to throw lavish parties to entertain his friends. Kavic had been employed as a parking meter repairman and he used his position to fleece the city and enrich himself. After emptying the parking meters, Kavich would take the bag of coins to the bank and deposit the money into his bank account. Kavich got so blatant with his crime that he even convinced his colleagues to empty boxes for him and gave them a cut out of the proceeds. His crime was only discovered when the city noticed that the returns from Kavich's parking meter were lower than expected. So they installed CCTV cameras in the area and Kavich was caught completely red-handed. But even without the CCTV installation, Kavich would have been caught anyway. He worked as a parking meter technician and was constantly depositing loads of coins into his bank account. It would be clear that something was fishy and anyone even taking a look would have figured out what was wrong. Our not so clever parking meter repairman pled guilty to nine counts of theft and one count of knowingly dealing with the proceeds of crime. In court, Kavich had an interesting story to tell when he was asked why he stole. He said that he'd grown up in a socially restrictive household and hadn't been allowed to make friends with people who weren't Croatian or Christian. This made him quite lonely, and he grew up thirsty for validation from his friends. He said that this thirst for validation moved him to constantly throw parties for his friends. At first, he could afford those parties, but soon he ran out of money. So he decided to steal money to continue hosting them, and that's what made him start stealing from the parking meter. The judge heard his sob story, but still decided that he deserved some jail time. He was then handed a nine-month jail sentence and 
and told to serve a two-year community corrections order. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay tuned right here to check out our past video on how these criminals got caught because of their social media posts. Number one. No, I didn't fake that. A Chinese woman known as Tang has been caught on camera trying to scam the unsuspecting owner of a truck by pretending he ran her over. It's a popular scam in China known as Peng Tsi in Chinese. The scam is a popular way for scammers to bilk money out of unsuspecting victims by pretending to be hit by their car, then demanding cash. Apparently Tang was in a business dispute with the owner of the truck and had lost the dispute. But instead of accepting her fate, she decided that she would teach the guy a lesson. She took a bicycle, ran after the owner of the truck in person, and threw the bicycle beneath the truck when it rolled to a stop. Afterwards, she crawled underneath the vehicle. Tang's goal was to claim that the driver had hit her and perhaps earn some money from the scheme. But that's not what happened. A CCTV camera along with several people were witnesses to the event, and the truck was barely moving when Tang crawled underneath it in full view of the driver. After acting out her big scene, she then called the police to complain that she'd been hit. The police arrived soon enough, and Tang claimed that she had been hurt and needed compensation of around 6,400 pounds. Because, of course, money fixes everything. But the scam did not work. The police saw the CCTV footage and discovered that the entire show was a ruse by Tang and that she was the one at fault. In the end, she was left looking like the dumb criminal she was. The only reason why this story even made our cut was because she was so ridiculous in trying to scam the truck owner that she already knew. As if the owner wasn't going to think anything was up as soon as he or she saw her. What's the worst thing that can happen when people post things on social media? Would it be getting the police's attention, like what happened to rapper Fredo and big-time scammer Valeski Barossi? Or would it be getting robbed for an expensive watch, like Parikh Jamo? Let's get right to it. Number 5. Lifestyle Guru Parikh Jamo is a French lifestyle influencer known for his cryptocurrency expertise. He has a master's degree in applied mathematics and knows four languages, English, Chinese, French, and Spanish. He lives in Hong Kong with his Australian model wife, Sarah Watts. Together, they enjoy a life full of caviar and champagne. In 2019, he founded the online banking site, Hi, with more than 30,000 loyal Instagram followers. Hi touts itself as a one-stop shop for cryptocurrency exchange and mobile banking. Jamo has thousands of followers and uses his influence and wealth to travel around the world in style, showing off the expensive accessories he brings with him. In December 2021, he made a post with his arm around his wife at a swanky Hong Kong restaurant with a Richard Mill watch on his wrist. A Richard Mill watch can cost up to $1 million. Stars like Kanye West, Ed Sheeran, Chris Brown, and many others often don Richard Mills. The company also has celebrity partners like Pharrell, golfer Bubba Watson, and actor John Malkovich. In the photo, Jamo wore a Richard Mill RM022 Aerodyne Dual Time Zone watch. It's made of material originally developed by NASA to be used on supersonic aircraft wings. The watch definitely isn't cheap. Jamo's watch comes with a six-figure price tag of $530,000. So, when one of his followers saw him wearing it on social media, Jamo seemed like the perfect target. In March 2022, Jamo and his wife were visiting New York City. It was Friday morning and they were coming home from the Sapphire 39 Adult Entertainment Club. They got out of the Uber at their Midtown Hotel when a man came up to Jamo and demanded his watch. Before he could answer, the man shot him six times in the legs and lower body. Jamo fell to the ground as his attacker tried to remove the watch from his arm. But Watch jumped on the man's back before he could take anything. The gunman fled, leaving Jamo bleeding on the city sidewalk. An ambulance came to take Jamo to Bellevue Hospital, and police recovered five shell casings from the crime scene. A surveillance video showed the suspect going into a porta potty to change clothing and then re emerging a few seconds later. He walked north on Lexington Avenue and dropped a dark colored bundle, possibly blood spattered clothing, in the trash. Another person came by a few minutes later to take the pile. According to the NYPD, the suspect fled with an unknown female accomplice in a black four door BMW. 
This is all the evidence police have to go on. No one has been arrested or charged with shooting Jamo. Jamo doesn't think his social media was to blame. Instead, he thinks someone knew that he had to watch and followed him to his Manhattan hotel to find the perfect time to strike. Number 4. Funky Friday Fredo is a hip-hop star known for his hit single, Funky Friday, which hit number one on the charts in 2018. His mixtape, Tables Turn, made it into the top 10 charts. Fredo, whose real name is Marvin Bailey, is from London and references his tough upbringing in his music. Fredo told the media that he was once stabbed four times, but he hasn't just been the victim. He spent time in prison in 2016 and 2017 for knife-related charges. He's now known for his social media posts, bragging about his private jets, wads of cash, bikini-clad women, and Harrod shopping sprees. But Fredo challenged this reputation, saying he'd rather use his money to get friends out of prison than flex his cash on material things. That didn't seem like the case, though, when Fredo posted a Snapchat of him strapping a seatbelt across 50,000 pounds back in October of 2019. Just a few minutes after posting the video, undercover police arrested Fredo, believing he had stolen property. Fredo and a friend were driving through London's jewelry district, Hatton Gardens, when police approached his Range Rover and asked to search it. Police seized a knife and wads of cash to put in an evidence container. Frodo's passenger was also arrested on suspicion of possessing a weapon, theft, and threatening the cops. Number 3. Spoiled Kids Jenny Ambula is a Colombian-born, Miami-based, self-proclaimed media influencer whose Instagram, when it was up, was full of flashy status items. She showed up to class in a Porsche, wearing designer clothes, jewelry, and bags from Chanel, Dior, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, and Dolce & Cabana. Ambula posted about how she uses her stacks of cash to buy shopping bags full of designer clothes and accessories. She's quite the jet setter, posing for photos in Paris, relaxing in Milan, and Ibiza and buying VIP passes to Coachella. According to Ambula, she's a self-made woman with incredible business acumen and a large social media following. This might be a bit of a stretch, considering she only had 11,000 Instagram followers at the time. Little did Ambula know that people were keeping close tabs on her and her family. The last straw was when Ambula posted a picture flaunting her Porsche Cayenne and a bright red Lamborghini. While many of her followers hit the like button, she also caught unwanted attention from the Colombian Federal Police. Ambula's father, Omar Ambula, was a port inspector in Colombia for 27 years with a modest monthly salary of $3,000. His daughter moved to Miami in October 2013 to attend the University of Miami and get a bachelor's degree in finance. But Colombian investigators were suspicious. They discovered that her father, Omar, was funding her lifestyle and expensive college tuition. Further investigation revealed that he accepted more than $600,000 in bribes probably millions more, for allowing untaxed items to pass through Colombia's Buenaventura port. When Colombian police suggested that Jenny's life was funded by her daddy's dirty money, she denied it, arguing that she was a self-made woman who made her own money as a YouTube content creator and social media influencer. The Globetrotters' grand plans came to a screeching halt in 2019. Ambula was on vacation in her home country when Colombian police arrested her and her parents in connection to her father's money laundering schemes. After the video of Ambula being detained in a Gucci shirt went viral, she made her Instagram private and deleted her lifestyle website. Ambula was allowed to stay on house arrest while her parents were sent to Colombian jail. The moral of the story? Don't boast about designer bags and luxury cars if you bought them with money from international cargo bribes. Number 2. The American Dream Valeski Barossi came to America from Haiti with big dreams. Starting out, he couldn't even afford clothes at Walmart or the McDonald's dollar menu. He started working at the Michigan-based financial literacy and credit score repair business, Financial Education Services. From there, his career took off. By January 2020, the company named Barossi as one of the top 10 leaders to watch closely in 2020. He came to America as a Haitian immigrant with nothing but the shirt on his back. He was a real success story and a testament to the American dream. With hard work, he became the youngest executive vice president in the company's history and the first ever employee to do more than six million in sales. He started his own company and became president of V. Barossi Solutions, Inc. But by January 2022, everyone found out it was all a scam. 
In March 2020, as businesses began to struggle in the COVID-stricken economy, the government offered emergency financial assistance to companies and their employees. Congress approved over $650 billion in forgivable loan packages. Barossi saw this as an opportunity to get rich quick. This Fort Lauderdale resident wasn't the only one to participate in such scams. South Florida led the nation in fraud during the financial crime wave of the COVID pandemic. One businessman bought a $318,000 Lamborghini with PPP money, and a nurse lied about his business to Lisa Mercedes-Benz and make a $475,000 child support payout. A North Miami couple claimed to be farmers to reap $1 million in benefits. There was so much financial fraud during the pandemic that the government created a specially dedicated COVID-19 Fraud Enforcement Task Group in 2021 to uncover relief fund fraud. They eventually tracked down Barossi, who scammed the government out of $4.2 million in PPP money, meant to go to employees and businesses who were genuinely struggling. Barossi and some of his employees filed fraudulent loan applications that lied about the company's expenses, net profit, and IRS tax forms to request more than $4 million from the U.S. government. He received about 2.1 million. To go along with his American Dream success story, Barossi posted on social media about his luxurious life and his so-called hard work. He broadcasted photos of himself draped in Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Chanel with captions like, from homeless to high-rise sky view, and you don't have to be great to get started. Get started to be great. He also loved to show off his Lamborghinis and Rolex watches. He self-published biographies online where he called himself a seven-figure entrepreneur, an NFT creator, and an expert in marketing and e-commerce. The COVID-19 Fraud Enforcement Task Group started getting suspicious and the Secret Service conducted an investigation. They eventually charged Barossi with five counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, and one count of aggravated identity theft. Barossi was supposed to stand trial, but was exposed to COVID-19 in jail and almost had to spend an extra two weeks there in quarantine. But his attorneys fought for him to get out on a $200,000 bond. If convicted of his slew of charges, he faces up to 132 years behind bars. Number 1. Dumb Deals Braden Garza was your average 18-year-old high school senior, but he had more money than most of his peers. He posted on his Instagram with stacks of hundreds and twenties, which made Scapoose Police Chief Norm Miller suspicious. Investigators found that Braden wasn't just your average teen working overtime at the grocery store. He was actually conducting thousands of dollars worth of deals over Snapchat. Even though weed is legal in Oregon, it's only legal for individuals 21 and over, and there are strict limits about where it comes from. The then 18-year-old Garza was using Snapchat to send images of his products, communicate with customers, and conduct sales transactions. Police arrested him on charges of unlawful delivery and possession. The same day police served a search warrant at his home and incidentally found more than just Garza's stash, but they found his roommate's stash too. As soon as Garza was released on bail, he hopped back on social media to announce his support for Trump, whom he had hoped would have forgiven him of his charges. He talked about the negative attention he was getting for his infamous social media posts, but he seemed to enjoy the attention. According to Garza, he has his MAGA hat to thank. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what you'd rather have. $250,000 a year for life or $10 million right now.